cast for magic. We come to the Pope on Film podcast to laugh, to cry, to care, because we need that. All of us. That indescribable feeling we get, which I'm describing literally right now. So how describable are we talking about here? That indescribable feeling we get when the Liz a Day theme song begins to play and we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn. <laughs> Dazzling images on a small Twitch stream, stream sound that is sound somehow Amaland horse erotica feels good in a podcast like this. Bunny Williams feels like the stoned parts of us, and May Lynn feels perfect and powerful because here they are. The Pope on Film podcast. We make movies better. Welcome to Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend Maylin. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode four hundred and seventy-five, and the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking, Bunny. <laughs> you can hear it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Big Big Shoe. And in case you haven't heard last week on the show, uh, it, let's, make it, let's make it more professional sounding. Previously on The Pope on Phil. I think that's good. Uh, Bunny Williams made an announcement that shook the podcast to its very core. That this October... As this podcast celebrates 10 years, yes. as we celebrate 10 years of the Pope on Film podcast, we will be ending the show. I need some dramatic music. Give me some dramatic music, buddy. Dun, dun, dun. And I just wanted to talk about it some more because, I mean, this October will be the 10 year anniversary of our podcast, buddy. Yes. 10 years! That's crazy. I was literally a completely different person when we started this podcast. Like, yes. Literally. Not just figuratively. Literally. I have completely changed. You you were a small Jewish black girl. Yeah. Um, we have. I'm proud of what we have done with this podcast. Uh, we've created, we have with this strange ass podcast that we've done for almost a year, for almost 10 years now, we have created roughly two and a half lifetimes of content. Yes. That will just wait online for some insane person to discover it. Hey kids, you want to listen to all of the Pope on Film podcasts? Well, good effing luck. Yeah. That's how 
much content we have made. Good sure. luck trying to hear everything we have created. That'll take you forever. You got to quit your job. You got to move to a um, like a monastery, the Pope on film monastery, where you can study nothing but the Pope on film. Yes. Get serious about it. I'd like to think that we've created so much content that says so much that in the future, when we're long since dead, America will become obsessed with the Pope on Film podcast like uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to think. Because it's are, basically we impossible. We are wild stallions. We are I wild mean, we, stallions. We just always have been. Yeah. yeah. I'm a wild horse now, Bunny. Yeah. And wild horses can't be broken. <laughs> Unless with a shotgun or a bat, I can get broken with that. We've created something that I don't know about you, Bunny, but I am very proud of what we have done. Yes, I am. That is true, Nadia Claire. You underestimate some people's dedication to hyperfixations. I sh certainly know that because my family is filled with ADHD people who get hyperfixated for long or possibly short periods of time about things and then they sort of it my 18 year old is staring daggers at me from across the room okay they're not staring daggers they're just staring but deep down inside they know that it's true so um so yeah there are some people who are hyper fixated my 18 year old is a completely different person yes. from when we started this but I'm really proud of the massive insanity that we have created here with this podcast. And I'm 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 happy of the fact that you have stuck with me for almost a whole damn decade, buddy. We yes. have known each other earlier than that. But we've been recording this podcast for a whole decade. At this point, you know me uh better than my older brother better than my parents better than my my entire biological family including aunts uncles all of that you know me you you our relationship with this podcast has lasted longer than my relationships with most of my exes <laughs> that's how long there we go the bunny and may lynn train has been a rolling that uh we've been together longer than almost we've had this podcast longer than most of my relationships so it's tasha first because we've been dating for 21 years now and this made the uh this fifth of may <laughs> i'm such a mexican this fifth of may will be our 19th wedding anniversary Nice. Between my wife and I, somehow we haven't killed each other yet. So, uh, yet there's still a chance if you've got if you've got um, murder on our on your uh, death pool, there's still a chance. So, um, so it, when it comes to the longest relationships I've ever had, it's Natasha, my wife, and then you, you and this podcast, funny, and then in third place is either sarah or tom depending on whether or not you think that tom and i were dating or not i do he probably doesn't i was quite clear with him the last year or two that we were with him that i loved him and that i had feelings for him and that i wanted to be in a romantic relationship with him and and told him that we had essentially already been in a relationship romantic relationship for years and years and years and years and years and he said that he loved me too and he cared about me too and he loved spending time with me too but despite us regular regularly holding hands and kissing and cuddling and masturbating together he just couldn't be seen ever dating another guy yeah but our relationship ended. And do you know what caused it to end, Bunny? Do you know what caused our relationship to end? What? Well, 
normally I wouldn't even bother to discuss this topic. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be delving so oh, deep. was it was it the introduction of of, of Mountain Dew Code Red? Because no. that fucked up a lot of relationships. No, if anything, that strengthened our relationship. Oh, okay. You wanna know how uh long ago Tom and I were a thing? We have never once texted each other. Oh. We used to get blitzed on Zima. Oh. Uh, we were both big fans of Crystal Pepsi. That's how long ago yes. our relationship was. Normally, I wouldn't bother getting discussing this topic and discussing this topic in so much detail. Uh, however, it's April, and this effing podcast is ending in October, so fuck it. So Tom and I went to Vegas. We both got shit-faced drunk. And at night, he put the moves on me. And, oh, you love me and want to spend almost all of your time with me and spend all of your money on me. But you can't be seen dating an, 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 another guy. And I respect that. But then we're in Vegas and you get drunk and get naked and lay on top of me and uh, stick your tongue in my mouth and try to go down on me. And then you ghost me. Yeah. I did nothing. Okay? We started talking again, uh, like, a, like maybe like a year ago, Tom and I. But then I brought up Vegas and he ghosted me again. It's not my fault you're ashamed of being secretly a little bit gay. We all are. <laughs> and it's not my fault that you're one of a billion cishet white guys who gets a little gay when you're drunk. Don't take it out on me. Okay? Don't take it out on me. One of the first things that I thought of when I realized that I was a woman, one of the first things that ran through my head was, fucking, I bet Tom is so fucking relieved. I bet Tom <laughs> feels like he won the freaking lottery. It's like, oh my God, Steve is actually a woman. I'm not a queer. Thank you, movie house. You know, running through the streets like it's a wonderful life yeah. or night. A couple yeah. of a couple of weeks ago, I went to church and Father Tom, Episcopalianism really is sort of like the choose your own adventure book of religion because it's it's there is no shared belief system. It's just a, you know, shared practice, not shared belief. So I have decided that God is totally fine with me fucking cussing. Okay. God knows I'm a good person. Everything's fine. God's okay with that. God and I, uh, her and I, we're good. Yeah. God and I. And so uh, it, I went to the Easter Mass, and, and Father Tom comes up to give his homily, to give his sermon. He starts off with a freaking circumcision joke. Okay. And then later in the sermon, he's talking about specific plot lines of the Lord of the Rings series this is episcopalian okay this is and it's really great you know uh i don't remember why i was talking about that but uh a couple of months ago oh i don't remember oh a couple of months ago he started his entire sermon was about the movie it's a wonderful life okay and I was just thinking of two things. Number one, Alfalfa from our gang. And number two, that shitty ass Carrie Elway's movie. It's a wonderful knife. Yeah. And so afterwards, I'm leaving the church and all of the priests and, and uh, priestesses, all of the, the people who ran the mass are there by the door, shaking everybody's hand and talking to them. And I shook Father Tom's hand and I'm like, there was a movie that came out a few months ago, and I'm interested if you have seen it. It's called It's a Wonderful Knife. And we started talking about some crappy horror movie in church. It's, it's, it, Episcopalianism is interesting. 
I have seen some Episcopal churches that have had like punk rock concerts and drag shows in their church. All right. Because we watched a good few crappy Christmas movies this last time. Yeah. This was not the one with the killer Santa robot, right? This was the other no, one. Where no, 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 no. That one was shit. There this was is like the some one... kind of time travel. Oh, the, yes. the guy in the sheet. Yeah. 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 Who, and almost, it, it, who it... almost looked like he was from Scary Movie. Justin Long. Justin Long yes. was the mayor of a tiny town and he's killing people. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And yeah, there was a was lesbian uh, like subplot that I really liked. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, thank God, I'm like I'm not a queer. Like, fuck off, Tom. And that bunny is the sort of brutal honesty that you can expect from me in the opening segments of this podcast from now until October. <laughs> yes, there's going to be a whole. Did somebody bunch of eat a whole cake in that movie? No, that's that's a ghost story. Remember? Oh, oh that was the pie. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. They ate a whole pie. That movie was um, it was an art film, and art is subjective, meaning people are going to take different things from it. And there are a lot of people out there that think it's beautiful, but I think it's fucking shit. And there you go. That's yeah. my review of the movie A Ghost Story. Um. So yeah. Uh, the Japs of this podcast are going to be really interesting, to be clear, in case you're listening now. Why have you started now? Yeah. Because we've been here for nine and nine years, and you're just starting now as we're ending? Boo! You've, you've, but if you're just joining us, before. the opening... Yeah. If you're just joining us, the opening monologue is called Jeff, a.k.a. The Petty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today, or as the kids like to call it, T-B-W-M-P-S-T-B-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T. To bloom disp to wiber sold it. Yes. As it's called on the street by the kids. They're like, you know what podcast on cap has the best riz? It's Tubuamupus Bidui Bursled It. <laughs> on cap, dead ass, skibbity toilet. That's <laughs> what the kids say on the streets. I know you're impressed with my slang. I, I am. I am. In fact, here's some more blunt honesty for you, and uh, Bunny, if you could uh, just, just let me say this, okay? Don't interrupt or anything like that, all right? Okay. Uh, here's some more blunt honesty for you. I did time in jail, man. Hard time. What was my crime? I stole the Declaration of Independence. They made a movie about it. Yeah. It's called Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. I'm Santa. You're the Ice Cream Bunny because you're Bunny. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the podcast ending. Um, so a part of me is hurt that it's ending. A part of me is in mourning because this show means a lot to me. And uh, it, because this podcast we spend, this time that we spend together, it means a lot to me and you, buddy, mean a lot to me. And I legit cannot believe that this podcast will be ending after 10 years. Um, to be clear, I am close to crying, but a large portion of that is I am way over exhausted and i am on hormone replacement yeah uh uh it, so it, it's what I, I i'm close to crying but also it's real easy to get me to cry yeah. nowadays so i just <coughs> want to be clear about that but i'm very sad about this podcast ending but also um it's been a freaking decade. How many podcasts can say that? Not a lot. You know? And, and yes, thank you, Nadia. It's okay to be emotional without an excuse. And uh, I'm getting way busier. Suddenly I find myself having a little bit of a career. Yeah. 
you know, and booking shows and going on tour. And, and you know, I, I suddenly have an actual career as a storyteller. I'm reading kids books mostly to adults, which was always the dream. I have an actual career as yeah. though I was I would read books to kids, but the parents would be sitting there all bored waiting for it to end. So I said, OK, kids love me. Kids love what I'm doing. But kids aren't going to be the ones that are waking up early on a Saturday and driving to where I do story time. So I need to try and be entertaining to the kids and the adults. And I went for a sort of, when I was a kid, I was primarily watching Monty Python and Looney Tunes. And a lot of times that was like more adult content. So I made a point to never talk down to the kids and to try and be funny for 21 plus years as an entertainer for kids to primarily entertain kids, but also to get the adults to crack up. And it was always my dream of like, I think that I could do this for adults, but nobody wants me to because I'm just a kid storyteller. And now here I am. I'm doing it. It's the dream. Yeah. Last night I performed on an all ages, all ages talent show. There were like four or five kids there. And I told the kids, I said, hey, Yes, I've primarily been doing shows for the last year at bars, nightclubs, drag shows, award shows, big festivals. But I can still entertain the kids. I still have that inside me. I'm still good with children. For example, uh, here's a funny joke you kids will love. Okay. So a priest and a rabbi and O.J. Simpson go to a, a, go to a bathhouse in Tibet. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm actually not going to say that. I'm not going to say that one. There were two kids in the front row that were just like <laughs> waiting for me to say more. It was it was really cute. Plus, as you yourself said, and I'd like to repeat that so that it doesn't sound like I'm shitting on you. As you yourself said, you're getting older in time. Yeah. And plus, you do it related to that. You do so much for this podcast. I show up and I talk and try and be funny. And now uh, I try and be busty in the hopes that it that helps. But so far it hasn't helped, which sucks because it's right here and it's all natural. But (laughs) so uh, you do so much to get this podcast out to the public. And I really appreciate all that you do for the podcast, Funny. I always have, and I am sure all of the poffies agree. So I'm going to be sad about this, sure. But yeah, it's probably time. Yeah. And I'll be super depressed for a while, but I'm okay with this. I am okay with this. We are pulling the trigger. So from then to now... I'm going to be stirring up some shit. Yeah. Yeah. My brother's a woman beater. I've heard that. There you go. My brother, my brother beats women and has an alcohol problem. I, for a, I, he was always called Joe for my entire life. And then he got older and he decided to go by Jose because that is, you know, his, his true name and, And then he took my father's nickname, and now he expects everyone to call him by his father's nickname. So I am going farther than that, and I am now calling him by uh, my aunt and uncle's nickname for him as a child. So he's not Joe anymore. He's Pepito. Pepito. He's little Pepito. He's little Pepito. So Pepito grew up to be a woman beater. There you go. Mic drop. Pipe bomb. (laughs) There you are. Fuck you, Tom. There you go. I'm happy. The best revenge is living a happy life. Yes. There you go. How are you doing, Bunny? You doing all right? Hanging in. Hanging in. Tired all the time. Same. But then again, I'm on... Yeah, but uh, you're like doing things. <laughs> I'm doing things and I'm going out and I'm doing stuff. My life is crazy right now. I had double hernia surgery. I, I breathe too long. I have to go take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so 
I had double hernia surgery. And then I got an audition to be in a podcast. Yeah. A queer scripted horror podcast. All of each episode would be a short story. Each one would be written by a different queer writer. And the entire cast would be uh, LGBTQ voiceover actors. And I had an audition and I was going to go in person for this podcast. And then I had to miss it because on my way towards the door to leave, I got in the middle of a dog fight and uh, my leg was mauled. Yes. And my lovely, beautiful, wonderful wife, my partner in life, uh, who is a very strict sort of stickler, she said, I wouldn't call it a mall. Like, don't tell people you got mauled because uh, he, you weren't mauled. But the way that I see it, if you got attacked, if you got in the middle of a dog fight and after that you found yourself picking pieces of your leg out of your leggings, yeah, that's a mauling. Yeah. That's a mauling. And I'm I was not, just I'm like, not sure where that line is, the fine line between maul and not maul. Between maul and bite, you know? Yeah. But I but I I had been bitten really bad and I was like going into shock and like freaking out. And uh I took my pants off to see the damage and there are all these holes on my leg. And I go and because I'm just sort of in a trance from the attack, I'm looking at my pants and I'm like, what? What is this in my pants? It's all sticky. It's covering the inside of my pants. Oh, shit. This is my leg. <laughs> I have pieces of me. How exciting. You've got to show the podcast now. Get that okay. leg up on the desk. It's been a it's been a week now, okay? Okay. To be clear, it has been a week. Mm. Okay. I am not. Can you see that? Wow, impressive. Yeah, yeah. I have holes in me now. This one it was super deep. Like I could almost see like like muscle tissue in this one. So the way I see it. Uh, if I'm ever like at a restaurant and I want some ranch, I can just put it in this. Yes. You know, extra extra bowl of ranch. So that's exciting. Uh, so yeah. So I've been dealing with that, and you're dealing with what may or may not be cancer, which so far has not won us an award. No, no. It should have. It should have. It's it unfair. You know. It should have. It absolutely should have. But it ha have it, is is that confirmed? Funny? Are you really going through it? Uh, I'm worried about. They you. strongly suspect, but there's not much I can do about it. Yeah. You know, they they got all freaked out about this lump on on the side here, so we had ultrasound, ultrasound, and all that. Well. I'm broke now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get <laughs> okay. that. Like that's yeah, exactly that's... the kind of thing I was trying to get them to not do. Yeah, ten minute warning. Uh, I get that. I get that. But then I did. Uh, uh, so I'm broken. I... It's not even half the deductible yet. Jesus, I am sorry, buddy. I am really sorry, and I love you. I love and you, too. I believe in you. You know what? I've heard of miracle workers in Malaysia. Yeah. We'll just take a quick trip down there. I'm pretty sure that, like, the, the voodoo medicine that they have over there. I would do it, but I don't practice it. It's, it's a possibility. It's no something to ball. consider. Yeah. The American healthcare system is shit. Uh, Nadia is absolutely right. The American healthcare system is but, shit. But but what what kind of a copay does a witch doctor want? Can oh, I get away with like half a like, chicken or something? 
probably just like a pelt. Yeah. You know, we'll just get you a pelt. Some uh, deer skin. Yeah. Mole skin. Just give them notebooks. There you go. So then I did my virtual audition for the podcast. Yeah. And I think that went well. And then I booked a big fancy, like, uh, $30 a plate drag brunch. And they posted an ad. And you saw that. They posted an ad focusing on me being like a special guest, featured entertainer for their show. And and that was awesome. They did that themselves. And then I... I, I reposted it on my story time with Maylin uh, page and they commented that something like we're we're so proud and and excited to have you performing for us. And it's like, really? Because I still have imposter syndrome. Yeah. And so it's really amazing to have this organization be like, hey, we're so excited to have you. And then last night, Oh, yesterday was just insane because we woke up super early and the whole family went to the zoo. Yeah. Super hot. And then we came home and then we got ready and went back into the city for my all ages variety show, which was very good. Uh, Yeah, I did. I have a great new joke. Do you want to hear it, Bunny? Yes, please. I figure out of everyone, and I've told this joke to maybe about 30 people at this point, but I figure you would be the best audience for this joke. Okay. Okay. What do you call a Hispanic Star Trek fan? Okay, I don't know. Go. A Mexa. Oh. I like that joke. I think it's adorable. That is a good joke. No, I it do is. like it. Thank you. I like it too. So I've been kind of busy and crazy. I have seen two movies this this past week. Have you? Yes. I finally saw Godzilla X Kong, Godzilla Times Kong, Godzilla Roman numeral 10 Kong, the, the new... Empire, yada, 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 something or other. Um, For the second movie in a row, Legendary Pictures has done it again. They made a Godzilla movie that (coughs) hardly features Godzilla. Yay! (laughs) Once again, they've made a King Kong movie that also features Godzilla. Yes. And it's like, I'm a little bit upset about that, but on the other hand, that was so many Godzilla movies before now. Yeah. You know, so many other movies were like, here's the plot, here's Godzilla coming in. So I can't slide it from that. I, I've gotten to the point where even I, a huge Godzilla fan, am like, I'm kind of done with these. With these yeah. American Godzilla. I'm kind of done. Uh, I'm kind of done. And I also saw the amazing, amazing horror film, Late Night with the Devil. It is currently my favorite movie of the year. I fucking loved it. They nailed like a late night 1970 talk show. Absolutely perfect. Of this guy who is just trying to beat Johnny Carson, but you fucking can't beat Johnny Carson. Yeah. Especially in his prime. So he's going more crazy, more towards that Morton Downey Donahue, Geraldo Rivera route. Yeah. And he brings on this woman who is supposedly possessed and shit goes south. But like they nailed the jokes, the look. It's I fucking loved it. I was blown away by it. And the ending was this close to scaring me. I wasn't yeah. scared leaving the theater, but I certainly was spooked. Yeah. I saw the last <clears throat> showing in town. I was the only one in the theater. I fucking loved it. I was shocked to see that it was a Shudder movie. Really? Yeah, honestly, if I had known that Shudder made it, I probably wouldn't have seen it. But I'm glad that I did because it's my favorite movie of the year. Freaking love it. 
That's not saying much. What is it going up against? Madam Web and that movie where a pool eats people? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it's going to stay number one for the rest of the year, but sure as shit, I absolutely love it. And I can't wait for it to come out so that we can watch it because I also think you'll fucking love it. Uh, I, I was really interested, and what's his face? The man whose name I cannot say is really quickly becoming one of my favorite actors. So I really want a, to see what he is able to do with that. He is amazing in this. There were times where I could absolutely believe that he was a 1970 late night talk show. Yeah. It has the right look, it has the right feel. And his jokes and his mannerisms, he fucking nailed it. I I just I I can't pronounce his name either. He's the foreign guy from Ant Man. Everywhere. This is the work of gypsies. That guy. Yes. He was also the spot in Suicide Squad. Yes. Okay, I forgot it. The Suicide Squad. The, the Suicide Squad. The so great movie absolutely loved it can't wait to do it for the podcast but um so that's about it other than this fucking movie don't don't even start with me don't even start with me there's only two minutes left on the clock i like the concept the cast is fucking insane i found a way to make this movie part of the gilmore girls extended universe yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not the best. Not the best. Oh no! Yeah, I, 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 I'm. I'm pretty. Yeah, no. But but. No. Bad Mei yeah, Lin. Okay. Bad. Yes. Bad Mei Lin. I hadn't seen it either. I didn't know if it was going to be good or bad either. You still picked it. <laughs> I did pick it because I find the the concept to be interesting. Maybe interesting for an episode of. Uh, Tales from the Dark Side and not a full length feature film. Yeah. But we'll get to that. Uh, but that's it for Jeff, aka the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Uh, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Yes, I concur. We will be right back. Nadia Claire. Uh, okay, so yes. Nadia Claire, no, Nadia Claire down down here has used my favorite Twitch emoji. Snake with an open mouth. Uh-huh. Because they have really weird emotes to use in Twitch chat. But my favorite is that. You use it when you are shocked. You use it when you are happy. There you go. There's more snakes. I freaking love it. That is the best emoji to use. That's the official emoji of the Boba Bill podcast. Okay. Snake with open mouth. So when you're doing the snake with open mouth, you really support the podcast. But yes, we're going to take a short break. We're going to show some videos, some silliness. And when we come back, we're going to talk about this week's movie, the 2011 or 2012 or 2013 film, The Brass Teapot. Yes. And I, I I I found a website. It's a secret website. It's gonna be interesting. But oh, no. that's for the second half. Uh we will be right back with more of the Pope on film after these messages. Dude. Scaring the foolish beasts by 
It's me, Reverend Steve. I am nervous because I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beverage that might kill me. There was a TV show called Dallas. Dallas was a soap opera that originally premiered in April of 1978 as a miniseries. But the miniseries was so popular that in September of 1978, they decided to turn it into a short one-season TV show. It became so popular that it ran from 1978 to 1991. One character, uh, Bobby Ewing, was killed off, but he was so popular that they decided to make his death a dream. Really stupid. And then, of course, the, the main character was sort of the, the patriarch of the family. His name was J.R. Ewing. In the 1980s, they made a beer. Premium beer. J.R. Ewing's private stock came out in the year 1980. And it says on the bottom here, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. I purchased very cheaply a six-pack of this. One had a hole in it, and it was empty, but the other five were still open and sealed, and so I put this in the fridge for a while, and I'm going to drink it. Surprisingly, I posted about this on Twitter, and I'm like, hey, I've got this 41-year-old beer. Who wants to see me try it? And the answer was a big, resounding, no, are you serious? You could die which I wasn't expecting from Twitter, but I basically got shamed. And uh, so I'm going to open this. This is weird. Do you see this? How, how do I? Ooh, look at that. That's the weirdest. Huh? Like the old V8? Yeah, it's like V8. Okay. So, um, all right. No, I didn't shake it. I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beer now, so Pinky's up for the classy stuff. So, okay. Hmm. First off, it tastes dusty. <laughs> It might be a little dust on the bottom. But when you get past that, okay, so you know when when you're like young, when you're like in your 20s, and you're like, I'm going to go get beer. You're talking about this. Too. The cheapest beer imaginable. Okay, so so there's like, there's like cheap beer that will burn your mouth because it's horrible. And then there's cheap beer where it's like Mickey's. That's what this is. This isn't bad, but it's also not good. It 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 tastes all right. It tastes all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It tastes cheap. It doesn't taste as uh as a premium as J.R. Ewing from the hit show Dallas, but no, this is all right. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, this isn't that bad. It's cheap and dusty. 
but I've I've drank cheap and dusty beer before. You know, go into some sketchy convenience store, and they have a ninety-eight cent uh pint of some beer you've never heard of before, and you buy that. That's what this tastes like. Uh, it's not that bad. Not that bad. It's all right. This is a weird video, but hey, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this during the podcast, hey, break time. Buddy and I are peeing. I had some crazy nicknames back in the 70s, but all those friends died in the 80s. I wonder who else I can call. Hello? Hey. Kind of cute. What's your name? Nancy? Oh, hi, Nancy. Stand by your window so I can see you. You stand a million miles away. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. I'm not allowed to have windows uh, court ordered. So, um, you sound kind of foxy. Uh, but this is not too personal. When was the last time you had sex? Coming up on the seventh day. Okay, I checked in as the record's 11. Listen, I know who he is. Uh, you know who, who what is? The killer. What killer? What the hell are you battling about? And if he gets me, I'm pretty sure you're next. Whoa. Whoa, what, what kind of shit are you getting me into, Pumpkin? Just give me some help nailing the guy when I bring him out. What are you battling about? What? <laughs> if I can't, then you can all relax because it's just a case of me being nuts. Yeah, and for, and for some reason, this is really turning me on. Then you won't mind cold cocking this guy when I bring him out. What? <laughs> you heard me. I grab the guy in my dream. You see me struggling, so you wake me up. We both come out, you whack the fucker, and we got him. Um. Pumpkin, please, please explain to me what you mean by whacked. Are you going to be Jock? Like a baseball bat or something? Just meet me at my porch at midnight. Oh, and meanwhile, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Okay, Pumpkin, you're freaking me out, but for some reason I'm also finding you very attractive. So, uh, how about you and me be girlfriend and boyfriend, huh? <laughs> That's the fifth time that's happened this week. Go back to the movie. Spider baby. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Don't be afraid, girl. Come on, come on. I'm a spider, and my name is Bitey. I'm a Leo, and I love dewy spider webs in the sunset. Long walks on the pavement, and hiding in shoes. And I'm looking for a special female, and girl, not everyone sees you the way I do. So let me look deep inside all eight of your beautiful eyes. And I don't see human like other people do. I see a glorious spider, baby. Yeah. So I want to let you know I'd play spider with you all night long. Shimmy here, up next to me, and do that stanky spider dance you do. So shake that cephalothorax and your abdomen do. Ah, girl. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. Be my spider, baby. Come on, come on. Sugar, spin 
know how it is when a male spider tries to show you what he's made of. And I gotta let you know, I don't mind dying for just one night of sweet spider love. If that's what it takes to get near your girl, a hungry female may consume any invertebrate that comes along, including her shooters. But baby, but baby, I don't mind because you're truly worthy. You're worth it, baby. My pedipals are palpitating, circulating. I could be perspirating, but I can't because I got an ectoskeleton. But that don't matter now. Nah. So let me be your daddy, baby. Hopelessly tangled up in your silky web. Let me kiss your fangs before you jump off my head. Yeah. Mm. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Come on, come on, be my baby spider. You know what to do, girl. Yeah. Species. Females eat the males after sweet, sweet love. But I don't mind. Nah. You see, I got eight boots on my legs for knocking. I notice you do too. Spider baby rocking all night long. You see, even spider love is blind. Come on. Ooh. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Sixteen yeah. boots of spider knocking. Come on. You know it's true, girl. Come on, girl. come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> come on, come on, be my baby. Yeah. Be my spider, baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be your daddy, spider, lonely. Come on, come on, be my baby. invade your space. Get Concrobium Mold Control. As it dries, only Concrobium crushes mold and mildew at its roots, leaving an invisible antimicrobial shield so it won't grow back. It's odorless, too. For the safe way to defend your home from mold and mildew, Concrobium. And don't forget to protect against musty odors and moisture damage with Concrobium Moisture Grabbers. You don't have to imagine that we're back. Because we are. If I had a million dollars, I'd stay in bed with you all day. We're letting people go, John. You're the first. We have a lot of applicants, all of whom have 10 years' experience. Okay. Things will get better. You're gonna have an amazing job one day. My Antiques Roadshow is coming this weekend. Why don't we see if we can find something and get on TV? I'm so sorry for this, John. Look, it gives you money when you hurt yourself. We have to promise to stop before it gets out of control. We make our million and we stop. I'll take the full Brazilian. I want it all gone. Let's do this the old-fashioned way. So, John, are you still with the same company? We switched to private investing. It looks like I'm doing all right. Shabbat Shalom. Where is the teapot? Our grandmother risked her life to save that teapot during the Holocaust. We have to find out what this thing is. The teapot possesses extraordinary power. You are in grave danger. Most people kill themselves for decades and get nowhere. It's a gift from the gods. We said we'd stop when it got out of hand. Oh! I'd say 
it's out of hand. Now tell me how can you save yourself? When you're turning evil. There is nothing evil about wanting more. What's happening? Your face, your eyes, like hanging out. I'm fine. Whatever it is that's going on, it's not worth it. Don't say we didn't warn you. What sort of dog do you two have? I heard him howling last night. Ow, ow. That was just some really violent sex. Storytime with Mei Lin, a one-of-a-kind, hyperactive and interactive blend of adult stand-up comedy and children's storytime because you're never too old for a good story. Mei Lin is going on tour in 2024 and after much deliberation, they have chosen the following wildly original name for their tour, Storytime with Mei Lin on tour, a one former man show. Brought to you in part by Spite. Don't miss your chance to see her on tour before Republicans ban her, just like they're busy banning all history books and, for that matter, books books. For more information on Mei Lin, like, I don't know, try Google maybe, or Bing if you're a weirdo. Hey, is Ask Jeeves still a thing? Probably not. Oh well. Storytime with Mei Lin. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Ronnie! What type of a name for a product is Concrobium? Concrobium? Yeah, that's the name of the... We just played a commercial for Concrobium, which is the commercial of the mold remover that yeah. features Grimy Mold Guy. We just played it, and it's called Concrobium. And it's like, what the fuck? That sounds... It, concrobium sounds like what they should have called unobtainium in avatar yes okay, unobtainium that's just bad writing <laughs> that's bad songwriting pt also uh my 18 year old reminded me um we had a disastrous time at the eclipse but i i'm gonna wait until we're farther okay. into the second half of the show to really bring it up but uh it's time buddy it's time it is time yes buddy my friend it is time once again for all of us here at the pope on film podcast to boot scoop boogie our way to whip and or nay nay our way to lambada our way lambada the forbidden dance our way into the second half. Do you know why it's called the Forbidden Dance Bunny? Uh, marketing? No, 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 no. It, it's a long dance. And it has a lot to do. I'm Hispanic. So I know about the Forbidden Dance. 
let yeah. me teach you a little bit about my culture, buddy. First off, when you're doing lambada, the forbidden dance. The guy's dick is out the whole dance. Oh, okay. Guy's dick is just all the way out. And also, while you're doing the lambada with your partner, uh, the woman is constantly pissing on the floor. Uh-huh. And one of the reasons why it's called the forbidden dance is you might slip and fall. People yeah. have broken their hips, broken their legs. People have died doing this because the floor is covered in lady pee. Yeah. And guys are just whipping their dick out. Indiana Jones in it. Yes. It's kind of sounding, sounding like it's only done by aristocrats. Yeah, you can slip and bruise your coccyx. And then at the end of the dance, you sing Burn Bitch Burn by Kiss from their 1984 al album a Animalize. Okay. And you do that because you know Kiss will sue the shit out of you. <laughs> Most of the lawsuits in like the 80s and the 90s were from Kiss suing people doing the Lombada. Yeah. Because how dare you sing our song, Animalize. How dare you sing our song, Burn Bitch Burn. That's from their 1984 album, Animalize. Um, and then when you're done doing the La Lombada, you draw a picture of Mohammed. Yeah. So so there's that. That's why it's forbidden. Oh, and there's no dipping your partner in the forbidden dance while you're doing La Bada, the forbidden dance. You don't dip your partner. Instead of dipping your partner, you use Lime Wire to download a Limp Biscuit album. Oh. And again, that's another reason why it's a forbidden dance. You might get a uh you might get a uh cease and desist from the copyright yeah. from the studio. Yeah. You might get a uh lawsuit. A and also it's LimeWire. You might get a, a a computer virus. Multiple viruses, yes. Yeah. So that's why and then of course it's preferred. That when you are using LimeWire to download a Limp Biscuit album at the end of Lambada, the Forbidden Dance, um, it's preferable that you download their 2000 album Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. Obviously. Yes. But it's actually um, what album you of Limp Biscuits you download at the end of Lambada, the Forbidden Dance. I'm saying it like I'm getting paid by the Forbidden Dance. Um, it's very much regional. In the East Coast, they primarily download um, Limp Biscuit's 1999 album, Significant Other, which of course features both Nookie and Break stuff. In Tucson, they yeah. primarily download their latest album, 2021's Limp Biscuit Still Sucks. Why? Because Tucson is fucking weird. <laughs> um, anyway, <coughs> this has been. May Lynn's Lombada Time, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Um, I just thought there isn't a lot to uh, talk about about this movie. It's pretty basic and predictable. How are you guys back? I was not going to listen to them bitching. Ten four. Okay. Love you, honey. I just finished talking about Lombada. The Forbidden Dance. Natasha and I Lombada every night. Yeah. Every night. She's just pissing all over the floor. I got my lady dick out. Yeah. That's that's what brings our family together. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh yes, the podcast. <laughs> this week. We take a shot at the dark with an obscure high concept indie film that we both had never heard of. So we were going in blind. Uh, the 2011 or 2012 or 2013 film, The Brass Teapot. Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Now, pump your brakes, Bunny, okay? Okay. Pump your brakes. Before we rip into this movie, 
I want to give it a little bit of credit. Before we start ripping into this movie and all of its flaws, and there are many, I just want to go into this with a little bit of positivity. First off, the concept has promise. I like the idea. Don't think you needed to bring violent Hasidic Jews into this, but you know, no. it, it, that feels vaguely offensive, but you, you know what? Uh, I thought it was a decent concept. Also, what a strange random ass cast this movie has. Yeah. What the hell? First off, Rory Gilmore's in it. Looking good. Secondly, SNL's Bobby Moynihan is in this. Uh, who else? Maybe from Arrested Development. Maybe Funke. Is that how they pronounce it in Arrested Development? It's been forever since. And I've and been. the the lead guy whose face was bothering me so much that I eventually had to look him up to mm -hmm. find out that he was the worst part of Forbidden Kingdom. And the way the way primarily that I know him, he was one of the stars of the Disney live action family comedy Sky High. Oh, that's how I know him. And then oh, uh, there's so much, there's so much more. Um, one of the guys was the white American star of the short-lived NBC sitcom Outsourced. Okay, which I like. I liked that show. Uh, who else? Uh, the Chinese guy was it was in like the last two or three Wes Anderson movies. Okay. He was in uh Asteroid City, and he was in the French Dispatch. I'm not sure if he was in any other. Fucking Jack friggin' McBrayer from Thirty Rock shows up. Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley plays one of the two possibly offensive. Uh, violent Hasidic Jews. So basically, they were they just like drove down Hollywood Boulevard and picked up all the actors that had signs that said "We'll act for food." Basically, uh, Matt comedian Matt Walsh has a cameo as as the Antiques Roadshow guy. Um, <laughs> the the redneck. The redneck. Oh, we will be getting back to the antique roadshow guy. Okay. You I, don't worry I, about the antique roadshow guy. Okay. We're going to say some things okay. about the antique roadshow guy. In the film, they made it seem as if he got onto Antiques Roadshow like in an afternoon. Like it's that easy to get on Antiques Roadshow. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go out. Get some Dairy Queen. Maybe stop at uh, the library and pick up something. Maybe go on Antiques Roadshow. It's not that easy to get on a TV show. No. But uh, Matt Walsh has a cameo. Kristen M Milioti was in this. He was. She was the redneck landlord's girlfriend in the trailer. Who was also the love interest in the much better movie, Andy Sandberg's Palm Springs. Yeah. Which we did for the podcast, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, at the center of all this, the couple at the center of all this, the hubby is from what you said. What did you say the husband was from? Uh, uh, Forbidden Kingdom. Forbidden Kingdom. And a also, movie I the, love, but would totally replace him in a second. Yeah. And the Disney movie Sky High. And the attractive wife is one of the main characters in the beloved series Ted Lasso. Oh. Okay. And I'd like to take one of our trademark, the Pope on Film, asides here, Bunford Williamson. Have you ever fucking seen Ted Lasso? No. Neither have I. I, I. I just haven't bothered. Oh, the Southern Fried American Fish Out of Water is going to teach the hoity-toity Brits about some down-home Southern hospitality. Don't care. 
I just don't care. And to be clear, I'm not saying that because my fucking older brother, Pepito, loves the show. Oh, I just God. haven't bothered seeing it. No, it doesn't, yeah, and it neither doesn't has hold seven any years. interest for me either. Yeah. You know, I've seen, I, like, clips and shit, and it's like, okay, so? Yeah. Don't care. Neither has Debonair Toast, who has her own Spotify channel um, yeah. on the Spoofity. Her music is really great, and I really love it. It's sort of like a like a techno, goth, uh, instrumental, uh, synth, lo-fi sort of thing, and I really dig it. And you should go listen to Debon Debonair Toast on Spotify. So cool. yeah, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Ted Lasso. Don't care for it. Never, never bothered to see it. I love that dude who plays Ted Lasso, but I don't care. I just don't care. Okay, with that out of the way, I wanted so much more from this movie. Yes. I thought the premise was decent. I watched the opening credits and got really, really interesting. Interested in what they were laying down in the opening credits. Mm-hmm. And then it was downhill from there. It was literally downhill from the opening fucking credits. The woman, the uh, attractive wife at the center of all this, she's actually a British actress, which I'm assuming is why she has a horrible high-pitched American accent that I freaking hate. Well, okay, and, and I really have to put, like, a big asterisk next to my review for this movie. But I'm old. Somewhere along the line, I have crossed that threshold, and I am old now. Okay? Mm hmm they both looked way, way, way too young for the parts. Yeah. And when we would start having spicy scenes, I, I, I felt uncomfortable. Like I get that. You're just fucking kids. Quit that. Yeah. And also, nothing happened in this movie that... I was surprised about. And how did they get a whole neighborhood populated by high school kids? Good question. Playing adults. Well, I have a theory about that. I believe that this movie is Rory Gilmore's character, the rich bitch. Yeah. Um, this movie is in an alternate universe where Rory married Logan Huntsberger, divorced him, took half of his money, and just kept being a rich-ass bitch. Yeah. So this movie, The Brass Teapot, is firmly in the, um, GG, the GGEU, the Gilmore Girls Extended Universe. Yeah. Because I love Rory Gilmore, but once that fucking Logan Huntsberger got into his into her life, she became fucking insufferable. Yeah. You mean to tell me that like one of the top students of in Chilton Prep is stealing boats and collecting trash on the side of the road? Fuck you, Logan Huntsberger. You ruined Rory Gilmore. Yeah. 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 In the beginning, they've got, like, a house. And yeah. it's like, already this is science fiction. If these young people who haven't been far removed from high school have a house, that period, that's a bit surprising for me. Yeah. I found the guy to be kind of generic. And then I found the woman to have, like, this high-pitched speaking voice that I freaking hated and I wanted to throw her through a window. 
but I I like all the people in this movie. It's got like a great cast. I thought the concept was interesting, but you never really know who any of these people are to give a shit about. <clears throat> no. You know, I therefore I, I, I did were, not like any of them. They were pretty generic. I don't think that that it's believable that this random cute little couple would so quickly turn so dark and corrupt. Yeah. And I love the fact I I I I hate the fact that like we need to find out about this teapot. Oh look, we found this book. It's filled with information about this teapot. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. I'm sure it's fine. Let's keep using the teapot. And then she uses the teapot. And then, like, things are getting bad. We need to find out more about this. You had a whole fucking book. Yeah. And you were reading it. That's all the information you need. <laughs> you don't need to go to the, to the guy from the Theopolis whatever fucking society. Because there's that freaking book that you already found that tells you everything. What but the like, hell? okay, but like with the way the opening credits set up this teapot, every fucking art student would know about this goddamn teapot. Because it mm -hmm. appe appears in art all through history. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody would know the brass teapot. It would not be some, you know, it would be like the holy fucking grail. You yeah. know? So that's why yeah. when we get to the antique roadshow guy, he's like, I don't know, someplace in China? There you go. Okay, thank you. I was wondering what your problem was with the antique roadshow guy. Like, are you fucking kidding? Like, like. With how they depicted this teapot in the credits, if you showed up with the teapot at the Antique Roadshow, he literally would have come in his pants. Yeah. Yeah. You Absolutely. Know, like somebody just sauntered in, and yes, yeah, you, you can just stop into the Antique Roadshow like you're stopping in 7-Eleven. You know, just mm -hmm. you happen to have the Hope Diamond on you. You know, you walk on. It happens like the same day. Yeah. It's everything else that happens. I'm going to say, how does he so easily, he gets on Antique Roadshow and then it plays the same day. Apparently it's Antique Roadshow Live. Yeah. Yeah. I did find the episode interesting, but it wasn't until the film was ended that I realized this would be great for an episode of Tales from the Dark Side. Or, I was really proud of this, Friday the 13th, the series. You remember that? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Because it was two teams looking for, like, these cursed objects. This is an hour and 35-minute episode of Friday the 13th, the series. Yeah. This this movie did not know what it wanted to be. I mean, like, yeah. they did not present the teapot as a cursed object. Yeah. Which, of course, it was. Yeah. You know. I feel like this would be a great episode of The Twilight Zone, but I want to be clear here. 80s Twilight Zone. Yeah. Not the Twilight new Zone? one. Huh? The 80s Twilight the, Zone? Yes, the new Twilight Zone. From the 80s. Not the one with Rod Serling, and not the most recent one with fucking Jordan Peele. And you are forgetting the one with Forrest Whitaker. Oh, shit, yeah, and the Forrest Whitaker one. No, the one in the 80s, the new Twilight Zone. It lasted for like a season or two, and then it was canceled. I was like, it wasn't that good. But that would be this movie. Would fit good there. Um, but a full-length feature film, I just don't think it has enough. 
And also, I think the tone sh- shifts drastically. Yeah. And, and I'm like, sorry. Be- when when she was when she was getting into the whole emotional harm thing. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's a bridge you're not coming back from. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I, I I I cannot imagine. You know, like you ever, you know, somebody you cared about me, you speaking to me like that, knowing you're hurting me for money. Yeah. No, that's it. It's it's over. We're done here. <laughs> yep. Right out the door. Yeah. Right out the freaking door. But yeah, it starts off as like a funny slapsticky romantic comedy and then eventually it gets dark as fuck and I don't think I, I think that drastic tonal shift like they get their happy ending in a sense because they are fleeing to Mexico yeah I don't know how much of a happy ending it is because they are definitely going to be blamed for all the dead people yes I wouldn't technically consider that a good ending, but it's it it's fun, lighthearted humor, romantic comedy, uh, high concept comedy about a teapot. Oh, you hurt yourself. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one important teapot, and that's Albert B. Fall. That's right, being responsible for the infamous teapot dome disaster, the teapot dome scandal which happened under Warren G. Harding's administration. That's the important thing. But of course, as they say, Bunny, a blessed object becomes curse, becomes a curse in human hands. That's what they say. And by they, I mean uh, Debonair Toast in the chat. Yes. Right Right over there. Uh, I was wondering who you were quoting. (laughs) Yeah. But here's the thing. I I didn't hate this movie. You seem to have hated it. Um, I'm yeah. eating popcorn. During, yeah. I'm eating popcorn during the podcast like professionals. Um, but I didn't hate it. But to use the term that was created by an a wise man, I feel like this is an airport movie. Yes. I feel like this is something that you're flipping through the TV, you see it on channel 45 at like 2 in the afternoon on a Sunday, you're bored, you have nothing else to do, you sit down, you watch this with commercial breaks, and you go, huh, that was interesting. It's an airport movie, but... I, I, I don't know. when I when I first watched it, I I gave it airport movie status. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now that I've had to live with it a few days, yeah, I've gotten to hate it quite a lot more. Uh, it's not at swept away, starring Madonna. Yeah. Levels of hate. But yeah, there's a lot of hate here. Yeah. I gotcha. It's an airport movie. Let's do a few stats really quick, because I find this interesting. This is a 2013 movie. The internet says it's a 2012 movie, and the copyright at the end of the film says it's a 2011 movie. But here, at the Pope on Film Podcast, we believe that the release date is when the film is released to the public. Yes. They finished the film in 2011. It premiered at film festivals in 2012. It was released to the public in 2013. So no IMDb, this is not a 2011 film, and no Wikipedia, no Wikipedia, this is not a 2012 film because that's when it was premiered at the Toronto Smelling Your Own Farts Festival. This is a 2013 movie. I am very passionate about this. I hate it when people are like, oh, this movie premiered at the Sundance Fart Festival 
in 2009, and it was released to the public in 2011. It's a 2009 movie. No, it ain't. 30 people saw it in 2009. Everyone else saw it in 2011. That doesn't make it a 2009 movie. 10 minutes. Um, but this is a 2013 movie. Um, it has a 6 out of 10 on IMDb, which isn't that bad. Yeah. It's decent, but then Rotten Tomatoes fucking hates it. It's got a 50% audience score. It's got like a 30% critic score. And you wouldn't believe how much money it made at the box office. Less than half a million. Ooh. Not a lot. That hurts. You want to know how little money this made? I'm pretty sure you can stream this film on Tubi. <laughs> where movies go to die. Yeah. Um, wow. I think this movie could benefit from a remake. I think it's an an, an interesting concept. Yeah, think... if, uh, if we replace every single thing in the movie with something good, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you get a different script. You get different actors. I think that you could make this way funnier, way darker. You could have a bunch of different takes on this. Yeah. Um, but here's the interesting thing that I wanted to... I, I, I found the Brass Teapot's IMDb page. I found the Brass Teapot's letterbox scores. I found, I, I found the Brass Teapot on IMDb. And I found the Brass Teapot on Wikipedia. I found the brass teapot everywhere, but I was like, I want more information. There's got to be more information about this film. So I found a, a wiki fandom site. And I'm like, is, really? is, this, is this movie such an underground cult hit that it has a wiki fans, um, a wiki fandom account? No, they don't. This is a fake wiki fandom page that is still up Whoa. about the brass teapot itself as if it's a real thing. I'm assuming this website is just a uh, viral marketing, which would have been popular in 2011 or 12 or 13. Yeah. But this is a brass teapot wiki as if you are a historian who is interested in the history of the brass teapot. As if it is true. It even says at the end of the wiki, if you for more information, please go to the Theosophicist Society.org. And if you believe you have located the brass teapot or have information relating to its whereabouts, please in email info at the at Theophilicist Society.org. And there's pages for the Theophysist Society for Alchemy and Powers. Um, yeah, this is a fake Wikipedia site as if this movie was real. And I find it interesting. Now, okay, I so actually... now my brain is trying to block out the movie. So did, was there a scene in the movie at all where they went to a wiki page for it? No, no, oh. they didn't. This is like a fan. This is like, this is like a something that. I'm assuming the filmmakers would hope that people would stumble upon, you know? But I found this, the legend of the Brass Teapot is way more interesting than the actual film. The Brass Teapot is said to be made in part from the blood money paid in silver to Judas for the treason of Jesus of Nazareth, thereby imbuing the vessel with a powerful and mystical alchemy. And it tells alchemy and it tells the entire story of the history of the brass teapot i find it to be fascinating unfortunately none of this was in the movie again the the opening credits was awesome yeah the opening where credits were, were great where they were basically laying out the same thing just in a much more artistic way yeah best yeah. best opening credits uh i don't know if i want to go ever 
But the opening credits were really pretty great for this movie. Yeah. And again, then it crashed and burned. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. If you're ever bored and you just want to watch something that you can also like be on your phone, <laughs> this is a great movie. This is a movie where you find it on Netflix and you go, eh, sounds interesting. And you put it on your queue. And then like a month or two later, you and your uh, wife, partner, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, are like, what should we watch tonight? Oh, you know what? Let's try this thing, the brass teapot. What's it about? It's about some magical thing. And if you hurt yourself, you get money. Oh, that's interesting. And you see it. And then afterwards you go, oh, that was all right. That's this movie. Yeah. It's not great. You, I, I don't know if we should. Do you, do we think this film got the Island of Dr. Moreau treatment and maybe there is a better cut somewhere in realms of impossibility? Probably. Maybe there is another cut of this. Man, hey, makers of the brass teapot, release the Snyder cut. Yeah. It's eight hours long in black and white and it tells the real story. Martian Manhunter is actually in yeah. the Snyder cut of the brass teapot. It's pretty exciting. And and, and and I like Thailand as Dr. Moreau. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Everybody in there was working for themselves. Yeah. Everybody in the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau had their own script. It's like they made a movie, but Val Kilmer like, oh, I'm going to be the hero. And then uh, Marlon Brando's like, oh, I'm going to be drunk and hang out with my midget friend. And then like everyone wrote their own script and then they they just put it all together and did some drugs and went to the jungle. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Moreau is just source material that I love. Like from being a kid watching The Island of Lost Souls with Bella Lugosi all the time. Yeah. Before the Burt Lancaster remake. Because again, I'm old. I saw yep. that version in the theaters. So I I was quite happy seeing just a batshit insane version of the movie. Hell yeah. And I, and I felt that it needed a batshit insane version of the movie. That's one of this. Yeah. Okay. So The Island of Dr. Moreau was a great remake because the original is good. How are you going to make this remake better by making it that shit insane. Yeah. I respect that. That's kind of cool. Like, oh, they're remaking this film. Okay, it's just going to be exactly the same, but with loud special effects and modern music. And I, I don't particularly care for that. Like, there are so many movies where it's like, oh, they're remaking it with Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yes. It's like, no, if you're going to remake a movie, make it totally year. different. <laughs> make it a musical. Make it in black and white. Make it fucking insane. I would love for someone to do that with this week's film, The Brass Teapot. Yeah. Someone make a crazy as hell version of it. So that's it for this week's show, The Brass Teapot. If it's on, you should watch it. Uh, ooh, it had a director's switch. Good filming. Uh, the Island of Doctor. Oh, right, not this one. This one was based on a comic book, but whatever. Um, next week, I say next week, but we're doing the show every other week, but I still like saying next week. I'm not going to change that. Next week's episode, we will be watching the 2022 Rafe Fines and that Russian chick from the New Mutants. Yeah. What is her name? Something um, Joy? Yeah. Uh, Anna Taylor Joy. The uh, horror, comedy, dramedy film, The Menu. Fucking love this movie. It's already on the cop cop. That's next week. But now that we're looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, the Lombada, uh, fuck Tom, stealing the Declaration of Independence. I have to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Last less than a minute before we get cut off by Zoom. I concur. So uh it I I agree with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. 
And I am May Lin, and on behalf of the whole family, I'd like to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do scuffles and poopy toots. Do do do.